This is episode 20 of the Relentless Man podcast, Code Part 4. Hi, and welcome to the Relentless Man podcast. I'm your host, Christian Mojaiso, and my goal is to help men die empty, to make sure that you die having used up every ounce of potential that is trapped within you. However, to help you die empty, I'll have to be very raw and brutally honest with you. So if you're easily offended, stop listening. If you're easily triggered, stop listening. If you can't handle explicit language, stop listening. If you are fragile, stop listening. Otherwise, let's dig in. Before we begin this episode, I'd like to urge you to not blindly implement everything that I say. Rather, what I recommend is that you turn on your own brain, that you make sure that every decision and every action that you take as a result of listening to this podcast is a product of your own decision making and thinking. Remember, do not be a follower, be a student. In this episode, we are going to continue. This is the fourth part of our series on code, and we're referring in particular to a code of conduct. And I define a code of conduct to be a set of beliefs that you'll never violate. And a code of conduct is important for a relentless man because if you're really a relentless man, if you're trying to die empty, if every day you're dying empty, it means there is something you want to achieve that very few people have ever been able to achieve and very likely has never been achieved by anybody before. You're trying to take humanity to a place that's never been before. What that means is that you're going to need to be an extraordinary person. It also means that you're going to need extraordinary standards. And that's where the code of conduct comes in. The code of conduct, if you have a correct code of conduct, it's a sort of belief system that will enable you to realize your true potential and die empty. It will be the sort of belief system that will enable you to become the extraordinary person you need to become in order to die empty. So that's one great value of having a code of conduct is that it enables you to, it gives you the belief system that you need in order to realize your true potential. Another benefit of having a code of conduct is it enables you to not make important decisions in the moment. Another great value of having a code of conduct is that, I mean, if you've ever listened to the studies, human beings are very suggestible. That is, we are we are influenced a lot by peer pressure. I mean, the greatest example of peer pressure you can imagine is like in Nazi Germany. People just due to the forces of leadership and community pressure, otherwise normal people who had normal lives with children and wives were certainly turned into this killing machine where they got Jews and did all sorts of atrocities to them. Why were they able to do this? Part of the reason was peer pressure. Part of the reason was social forces that forced people to behave in certain ways. Now if you look at Part of it was social pressure that forced people to behave in ways that were completely immoral and any human who's detached from the situation would realize how could human beings behave this way. It's unbelievable. But you see, the amazing thing that is that even in Nazi Germany, what happened was that there were a few individuals who refused to implement evil orders. What did they have different? These people had a code. They had a certain belief and standard that they were not going to violate. It didn't matter if the leader told them to violate it or anyone else in the community. So that's one value. It's an extreme example, but that's one value of having a code of conduct is that a code of conduct will make you immune to peer pressure. It will make you the sort of person who does the right thing, regardless of the pressure, the leaders, and anything in your environment. And this is absolutely the person you need to become. A person who has standards that you follow because you know they're the right standards. Because if you don't do this, you're really going to be blown away by the wind and you'll never realize your true potential. Okay, so I have a couple of questions left from my list of questions about a code of conduct. So let's tackle those. This is number 19 on the list. How many things should be on my code? Yeah, so your code of conduct, we said, is a set of beliefs that you never violate, the set of beliefs that you follow in order to realize your true potential. Now, of course, the natural question is, how many things should be on your code of conduct? And so obviously, I can't give you a specific number. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve. But there is no limit to how many things to put on your code of conduct. And the code of conduct, a code of conduct is the sort of thing that 
you improve it's something that evolves that is you add things to it you refine things and you take things away from it so yeah it could be really long it, it doesn't matter it's just so long as it's something that you consciously construct and do not hesitate to add things to your code of conduct just because you feel it's too long so there are many right now you already have certain standards that you'll never violate perhaps there are certain foods you'll never eat perhaps there are certain ways you'll never behave perhaps you don't insult your parents Perhaps you are the sort of person who always shows up on time. You have a really huge, if we look, if we analyze all your behaviors, there's going to be a couple of behaviors that you never violate, that you're always consistent on. And the list is really huge and you're still able to implement them. So there's actually, there's no reason to suggest that there's a limit to how many things you can have on your code of conduct. So anytime you're trying to achieve your mission in life, you're trying to achieve this massive goal, then whatever you need to do in order to arrive there whatever beliefs you need you just add them to the list there is no limit to how many beliefs you can remain consistent with so long as they're obviously beliefs that are moving you forward towards your goal and also want to make sure that they're beliefs that are empowering people if your beliefs and your code of conduct oppresses people it's a bad code of conduct however yeah there is there's really no limit to how many things to put on your code of conduct your brain is a remarkable tool that can store a lot of information the thing is just you want to make sure that you live in accordance with your code. If you put something on your code of conduct, it's not a skill. It's a sort of thing that you can embody right now. That's one of the true tests of whether something should be on your code of conduct or not. All right, I think I just went on a tangent there. So <laughs> before I get on too many tangents, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's follow another question here. This is number 14 on the list. Doesn't a code make me rigid? Yeah, so you're probably noticing that there's an aspect of the code that is rigid. That is, for instance, if you set standards that you never violate, then you're kind of restricted in that sense. So let's say you set a standard that you always go to bed at 10 p.m. That's your standard. You always go to bed at 10 p.m. That's who you are. That's something that's in your code. Well, that becomes kind of rigid, isn't it? Because suddenly you're not flexible. At 10 p.m., you always have to be going to bed at 10 p.m. You can't like, let's say, go to the beer, go to the bar with your friends to drink some beer or really adjust around 10 p.m. So you might be thinking, isn't that like the opposite of being creative? That it stopped me from realizing my true creative potential. Well, the answer is no, because... The world runs by certain laws and principles. That's one way to look at it. What I'd like to say is that certain things need to change and certain things don't need to change. So for instance, there's a way things function. Let's say a car. A car has certain, operates by certain rules. There's a certain number of wheels that you need. There's a certain engine that you need. Now, you can make adjustments to the car. You can change them. It's good to be creative, but you can't violate the fundamental principles by which the car works. Otherwise, you don't have a car anymore. So, for instance, you can adapt the color of the car. You could maybe change how strong the engine is, but maybe you're not going to get rid of an engine or you're not going to get rid of the tires of the car because you could change the color, but you're not going to get rid of tires because if you get rid of them, you no longer have a car. That is, there are certain things on the car that you can change and other things that are fundamental and have to be removed remained in place. That is also true of you and your mission in life. That is, there are certain things that you're going to need to be adaptable about and there are certain things that are going to stay rigid. If you're completely adaptable and you have no standards, then you're really not going to achieve your goal. Because imagine if you're completely flexible, then you have a problem. Because in order to accomplish your goal, for instance, if you have a craft, you're going to have to show up, let's say, four hours every day to realize your goal. That is, you can't really be skipping many days. But if you're so adaptable, what's going to happen is if you have to make it up as you go along, what's going to happen is you're going to show up, it's time to practice, your friend calls you, you stop practicing, you go and hang out with your friend. The end result is you don't put in the practice you need in order to realize your goals. So then in that case, the amount that, the, the amount you practice is something that has to be rigid. It's something that you can change a bit, but not so much because you have, there's, an, there's an element of consistency and grit that you need in order to realize your true potential. So that is certain things need to remain fixed and certain things can be adapted. And a code of conduct has those things that need to remain fixed. For instance, there are certain things you need to do in order to realize your potential. You need to learn as much as possible. Okay, those are the sorts of things that are not really adaptable. That is, you don't decide today I'm going to read, tomorrow I'm not going to read, the day after, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read for a year. No, no, no. It's Those are things that have to remain constant. You have to be learning every single day or at least maybe one day off, but mostly learning every almost often if you're going to realize your true potential. So that is, it takes intelligence to figure out the things that are rigid and the things that you can change. 
and you want to keep the things that need to be rigid rigid and leave yourself adaptable to things that need to be adaptable. And your code of conduct contains things that are rigid, the sorts of things that you're not going to change, the sorts of things that are fundamentals that you need to keep in place in order to enable you to realize your mission, to die empty, and have a massive impact on the world. Okay, run out of time. All right, next question is... Number 28 asks, will having a code make me a better learner? So obviously it depends on what code you have. But yeah, so if you're going to be relentless, if you're going to die empty, then one thing that's a constant is that you're going to need to learn. And we did a series of episodes on learning. So whatever your conduct, code of conduct is, it has to, ne- it needs to have something in there that's going to enable you to learn as much as possible, to grow as much as possible. So yes, if you have such a thing on your code of conduct, then of course having a code of conduct is going to help you learn. So people have different things on the list. It mo- it could be something as simple as, look, I read for four hours every day. If you have such a thing as your belief system, it's on your code of conduct, it's really who you are. That means you can't go to bed if you haven't read for four hours every single day. Well, obviously, if you have such a code of conduct, then your ability to learn and the amount of ideas that are in your brain is going to increase massively. If you're trying to learn a skill, any skill that is, we talked about how if you have a craft, in order to master your craft, you're going to have to learn certain skills. In order to learn those skills, well, there are certain fundamental ways of thinking you'll need to have. For instance, it could be that if you're going to learn something, you need to be open to feedback. That is, if people criticize your work, you don't take it personally, but you think about what they're saying. And if it's something that makes sense, you actually improve it. So you see, a nice belief system to have is I'm the sort of person that is open to being changed by feedback. That's a nice belief to have in your code of conduct. If you have such a belief, then when you show up to learn and someone criticizes you, emotionally, you might be feeling horrible and you might not want to listen to them. But because your code says, I'm willing to take feedback. Now you have to take feedback. And the end result is you learn much faster. And so your code here is helping you because it's allowing you to do the right thing regardless of how you feel in the moment. And that's really important because otherwise you're wishy-washy and you stop being a relentless man. And there are obviously many other beliefs you need to have in order to, in order to uh, l- learn anything. Um, I'm trying to think of maybe other beliefs you might need to have. Maybe, oh yeah, you need to show up like consistently for your practice sessions in order to learn something well what's going to guarantee that you show up all the time to learn it's it could be something on your code maybe your code says look every single day i work on my weaknesses okay if that's your code of conduct then that means that every single if you try to learn something you're going to focus on what you're weak at and every single day you're going to attack it relentlessly attack it relentlessly and if you do this of course you're going to learn much faster so yes having a code of conduct is going to impact your learning and not just your learning it's gonna if you have the right code of conduct it's going to impact everything about you. It will impact how you think, how you behave, how other people perceive you, how far you go in the world, the sorts of things you accomplish, what quality of leader you become. So really having a code of conduct is not an optional thing. And especially for other people, sure, I'm not saying everybody should have a code of conduct, but if you're a relentless man, If you're trying to die empty, if that's your goal is to die empty, then really you need to have certain standards, a certain set of beliefs that you live by and that you never violate. It's the rigidity is important. There's certain things need to be rigid and unchanging and other things need to change. If you change everything, just doesn't work. If you're too rigid, of course, it doesn't work. So you want to be careful. Oh, geez, I went on another tangent again. All right, all right, all right. Next question. God damn, me and the tangents nowadays. All right. 31 asks, will having a code make my relationships better? Yeah, so one thing to note is that if you're a relentless man and you have a massive goal that you're trying to achieve, it's unlikely that you're going to achieve that goal alone, which means you're going to have to connect and relate with people. You're going to need to have great relationships with people, you know, maybe mentors, teachers, community, maybe your family. You're going to need to have great relationships in order to help you realize your true potential. So it's a natural question to think about whether a code of conduct will help your relationships. And the answer is absolutely, it will. Especially if you have the right things on your code of conduct. So your code of conduct could be things like, I always take care of my people. If that's really something that's in your code of conduct, then when it comes to your family and friends, you're really going to take care of them. You're going to spend time with them. You're going to understand them. You're going to listen to them. And if you take care of them, regardless of how you feel, the end result is that those people are going to end up liking you. And if they like you, they're more likely to refer you to others. They're more likely to open doors for you in order to achieve your goals. 
And that's all a product of you having a belief system that, because we said before, a belief system has to be something that empowers others. If your code of conduct has beliefs that just disempower others, hold others back, stop them from realizing their potential and achieving their dreams, then that's a problem. So if you have a good code of conduct, a code of conduct of a relentless man, well, it empowers people. What do you think happens if you empower people? The people empower you back. If you help me get what I want, I'm going to help you get what you want. So that's another value of having a code of conduct. Because a code of conduct is empowering you, it's empowering others, and other people are also finding ways to empower and help you out. And also it means that usually if like, let's say you're in a relationship with someone, it's easy to get emotional. So maybe they say something that you don't like. If you have no code and no standard of behavior, you might end up yelling or shouting at them. But if you have something in your code that says, look, I never yell at my wife or I never insult my girlfriend. If you have that somewhere in your code of conduct, what that means is that even when she insults you, even when she really pushes you to the brink, Because you have a good code of conduct, you're not going to explode emotionally. You're going to keep your cool and not insult her. And if you do that, your relationship is more likely to succeed than if you insult her or hit her or any of those sorts of things. So yes, having a code of conduct is going to help a lot your relationships. And the other thing also is if most people I said were, most people have average or below average standards. Most people don't have a code that they live by. What that means is that if you have a code that you live by, you're going to inspire them. They're going to look to you for guidance. They're going to look to you for leadership. And once this happens, your relationship with them is going to improve. Because when people look to you for guidance, then they pay attention to you and they get closer to you. And so if you're trying to get closer to people, because there's a sense in which part of the essence of living as a human is having great relationships with people and enabling others to have great relationships. So if you have a good, if you have a code of conduct, then the code of conduct is going to help you because once you're a leader, people are going to want to connect and be closer to you. So if you're looking to have great relationship with people, then one thing you really need is a code of conduct. All right, next question. This is number three on my list. What is your code of conduct? Hmm. All right, so this question is asking about my personal code of conduct. So as I mentioned before, a code of conduct is a work in progress. So I do have a couple of things on my code of conduct right now. Okay, let me, um, cause the, the, there are a couple of stuff. So let, let me, let me read to you some of the things I have on my own code of conduct. So for example, the first thing on my code of conduct is I always do what I said I will do. So if I say to myself, if I write down a piece of paper, I say to myself, today I'm going to show up and practice math for two hours. I show up exactly when I said I was going to show up and I practice for exactly two hours. If I tell someone I'm going to be there at this time, I'm always there at this time. So when I say something, I do it. That's one thing that's on my personal code of conduct. Another thing that's on my own personal code of conduct is that I embody my message. What that means is that as a leader of this community, when I tell you, when I recommend that you do something, I do it as well. So if I recommend that you read at least a book a week, I read definitely at least a book a week. If I recommend that you have a code of conduct, I have a code of conduct. If I tell you that it's important for you to die empty, I also die empty every single day. If I tell you that your code of conduct must empower people, my code of conduct empowers people. So that's another thing that's on my code of conduct. Another one is that I am open to being changed by new information. This is important in particular because in order to serve this community, part of what I need to do is to learn a lot. That is because I'm trying to give you the mindset you need in order to die empty. To do that, I need to know the mindset myself. What that means is that I need to read a heck of a lot. So when I say read here, I don't mean reading physical books. I usually listen to podcasts and audiobooks. So what I do is I listen as much as possible every single day to people much smarter than me. And the end result is that, and I allow myself, this is the part, I open, I, I'm open. i open to being changed by new information. Because if I allow myself to accept and listen and be changed by this information, I'm able to get more ideas and I'm therefore able to explain them to you and help you on your journey towards realizing your true potential. The other thing that's on my code of conduct is I only do those things that move me towards my goals. And that's important. That is, I don't waste my time on things that if I'm do if I'm doing something inessential, something that is not necessary in order to move me towards my goals, it's not intentional. Once I discover that something doesn't serve me, once I discover that something is not helping me to achieve my mission in life, my mission in life is to help men die empty. If I'm if there's anything that's not helping me to help men die empty, I just kick it off the list. 
I only do I only do those things that help me to help men die empty. So basically, my mission helps me to decide what how to organize my day and what things to do and not do. So there are other stuff on my list, but uh, you 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 have enough of an idea of what my code of conduct is. Plus, I don't want to bias you. I'd rather you come up with your own code of conduct. But if you have more questions about my personal code, then you can let me know about it in my email. All right. Enough about me. This is weird. Yeah, 27 on the list. What does 27 say? Don't I need to be an asshole in order to succeed? There's this belief because we look at highly successful people, guys like uh, Steve Jobs and a bunch of other successful people, and we hear stories about how they were assholes, how they yelled at people, how they treated people like crap, and it's always told to us as that's what you need to do. That's the sort of person you need to be in order to uh, succeed in life. Well, you see, there's a difference between correlation and causation. Just because two things happen together doesn't mean one caused the other. Just because Steve Jobs is an asshole doesn't mean that being an asshole enabled him to be successful and impact the world in terms of technology. In fact, it's very likely that the thing that those people succeeded in spite of being assholes. So certainly, it is very possible, it is very possible to be successful and still be nice and good to people. To be someone of with a good code, a code that uplifts others. It's possible to have a code that empowers you and everybody around you without needing to be an asshole, and you're still able to succeed that way. So, and in fact, being an asshole holds you back because success is not just about money or just achieving things in the world. There's also emotional success. And you're not going to have emotional success if you're yelling at people, treating them like crap, insulting them, screwing them over. Because there is something about our psyche that wants to connect with people. There's a part of us that wants to have great relationships. There's a part of us that realizes that we are not isolated individuals. We are connected to everybody and everything around us. So being an asshole actually works contrary to you realizing your true potential. Because you have emotional potential, you also have social potential. So if you focus all your energy on making a lot of money and then you treat everybody like shit, well, you're not realizing your social potential. You're not realizing your emotional potential. You're not realizing your spiritual potential. All those are important. All those are dimensions you need to have in order to really die empty. So maybe for other people, there are options about being assholes. But for you, a relentless man, a member of this community, being an asshole is really not an option for you. You want to be a person who has a code of conduct that not only empowers you, but everybody around you. Because if you're an asshole, if you treat people badly, you're not realizing your emotional and your spiritual potential. And actually, ultimately, treating people like an asshole in the short term at work, but not in the long term. Even individuals who are a little harsh in their lower careers, in order to achieve big things, had to realize that there's the human component to things. If you want to get the best out of people, if you want to accomplish massive things for the world, then you're going to need to work with people and you're going to need to learn how to empower them and get the best out of them. You're certainly not going to get the best out of them by being an asshole all the time. It may temporarily work, but that is not the path to go. So no, you don't need to be an asshole to succeed. You can succeed without being an asshole. And for a relentless man, your code of conduct is the sort of thing that makes sure that you're not an asshole to others, that you push the human race forward. All right, next question. Oh, wait, I actually just... Oh, my goodness, people. So I just answered all the questions on my list. So, yes, this is... uh, From what I can tell, this is going to be, at least for a while, we're not going to be talking about code of conduct because this is the fourth part of it. But yes, a code of conduct is absolutely paramount. If you don't have one, I really recommend that you pick up one. And throughout this series, we've been talking about the value of having a code of conduct. And one of the important things we said about it is that it enables you to do the right thing even when you don't feel like it. And that, in a sense, is a a core thing in discipline, right? To die empty and realize your potential, you're going to need to be very disciplined. What this means in particular is that you're going to need to be able to do the right thing even when you don't feel like it. When you feel like sleeping or hanging out with your friends, but you need to actually put in time to work on your craft, well, a code of conduct will make you, will enable you to make that decision because a code of conduct is the sort of thing that is your belief system, it's who you are. And already you have certain beliefs that you're not willing to violate. For instance, it's very likely that you don't hit women. It's part of who you are. 
okay? You don't practice this. It's just who you are. You don't hit women, okay? You may have other things. You don't insult your parents. Under no circumstances do you insult your parents. You may be angry. They may make you feel like crap, but you never insult them. This is a standard that you have. Okay, this is something that's on your code of conduct. You never wrote it down, but these are some of the things that are on your code of conduct. So all I'm suggesting here is that as a relentless man, what you want to do is you want to get that code of conduct that you already have and make it conscious. You want to deliberately put things on that code of conduct that are going to move you towards your goals and enable you to die empty. And there are a couple of things that, and actually, in a sense, this podcast can be viewed as Because, okay, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to help you die empty. I'm trying to help you realize your potential, okay? How am I doing that? I mean, I'm not giving you money. I'm not uh, showing up to your work and telling you what to do. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I realize that in order for you to realize your potential, you need to think differently. You need to think in an extraordinary way. You need a different mindset, a different operating system by which you work. And so in this podcast, what I do is I give you the operating system you need. I, in my own journey to become relentless, in my own journey to die empty, I learn things. And when I learn these things, I share them with you. And the goal is to give you the right mindset. Because if you have the right mindset, if you can think in the right way, then you're able to realize your true potential. So you see, in a sense, then this podcast is all about me picking the principles, me picking the beliefs and ideas and thinking that you really need to have in order to accomplish your goals. And what that means is that actually every episode, in every episode, I'm highlighting a belief system you need to put on your code of conduct. That is, I'm giving you enough ideas to think about so that you can construct your code of conduct. And when your code of conduct is good enough and you're following it decade after decade, year after year, (laughs) <laughs> you're following it day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. If you have the right code of conduct, and that's part of what I'm doing here, and you follow it consistently, relentlessly, then you're going to really realize your potential and you're going to die empty. And believe me, trapped within you is greatness. Trapped within you are books that were never written. <laughs> trapped within you are songs that were never sung. Trapped within you are paintings that were never painted. Trapped within you are massive scientific breakthroughs trapped within your great sports performances your potential is really extraordinary and if you can have a code if you can live by your code if you can push yourself to the limit it's unbelievable it's remarkable the sorts of things you'll be able to accomplish and that's what excites me helping you to unlock this potential that you have helping you to unleash this greatness that's within you so that you can impact the world and transform it because the world is filled with problems There are problems everywhere. Look, we have problems in the economy. We have problems in politics, problems in social relations, problems in sports. The world is filled with problems. And there are many problems that people have no idea how to solve. But if you can realize your potential, you can solve these problems. You can take us all. You could take humanity to a place it's never been before. And this is what gets me up in the morning. The thought of enabling you, giving you the mindset you need in order to unleash your potential. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, please email me. My email is in the episode description. Otherwise, thank you once again for listening and hope you have a relentless week. Bye.